Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you happen to stumble upon it because you're searching the net for Tai Chi stuff, welcome. It's uh, something that you can use to learn the 24 or the 108 Yang style form, but if you have no Tai Chi Chuan skills at all, you might want to consider finding a local teacher. You cannot really learn from a DVD because the DVD cannot give you feedback to help you realize whether you're or, uh, performing a certain gesture a specific way. However, if you do have some Tai Chi Chuan background or if you have good spatial awareness, you might be able to go through the videos and figure things out. I've set them up in a fashion where I have an agenda, maybe one, two, or three postures in a row, and then I go into details on each one of those postures. Within each one of those videos at the end, there's also practice sessions that you can follow along in uh, different angles from the camera perspective. I also happen to be one who believes in following uh, Yang Chen Fu's 10 important principles, which includes doing the form in two directions. In a lot of the schools today, most people are doing it for health only, and they'll execute the form in one particular, what I call the common direction. But it doesn't make any sense to me that if I'm doing white crane spreads its wings and I'm posting on my right foot, or leg, same with a couple of the other gestures, and that gesture isn't repeated again in the form, when do you give equal time to the other side? Not only that, when do you give equal time to another portion of your brain? So if you've never done your form in another direction, I would encourage you to try that. And I'm pretty confident that once you do, you're gonna find out that it's quite challenging. But it only makes sense in terms of uh, staying balanced. I mentioned Yang Chen Fu's 10 important principles principles because I figured that he was the third generation of the Yang style family and therefore he took the time to document what he considered very important. That being said, I'd like to follow those principles and have seen amazing results not only in myself but also in my students. However, because I follow those ten principles, I've also sort of been given a reputation of being a demanding teacher. But remember, it's not me that's demanding, it's the principles that are demanding. Now, I don't want to scare anybody and make you think that they're impossible or very, very difficult. They're just challenging. But anything that's easy in life has no real value to it. So consider those a blessing that they have something written down for us to follow, which is really has our best interest in mind. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is there's another folder here called Essentials uh, for Tai Chi Chuan Preparation. I mean, that's not the exact title, but uh, there's one particular group of videos that you should look at before you even start your form. And in those videos, there's balancing, walking drills, names of stances. Um, I go through Yang Chen Fu's 10 important principles using one single gesture. It's pretty daunting to apply 10 principles to each gesture as you're learning them. So by taking one gesture and looking at those 10 principles with that one gesture, you start to get a hint as to how to uh, approach them as you go forward in your training. So now I want to speak to those of you who are actually new and plan to join my classes, just to kind of give you a mental uh, set, a mindset that you can look to because I teach it again sort of in the Eastern fashion, which basically means there's no beginner class. You jump in, you start your journey, you open the door to Tai Chi Chuan. So there's a mindset that I want you to um, grab onto so that you don't get frustrated and quit too soon because it does take time and patience is one of your biggest challenges. So when you enter into my particular world and method of teaching, you have to remember that everybody that's in the class, even if they've been doing it for a few years before you, are still studying. You don't do Tai Chi Chuan. It's not like an exercise class. It's mind, body, and spirit all integrated as one complete wholeness. As a human being, we don't isolate any one particular component of who we are. So it is with Tai Chi Chuan, you're putting all of these together. So unlike, say, a jazzercise program where you follow the instructor, that's pretty much just body and mind uh, kind of thing, but there's no real spirit behind it. Um, well, actually, I guess I should say that the way. There's, there's good spirit and there's good body, but there's not really a lot of mind uh, other than just following a routine over and over, and eventually you'll have it memorized. But in Tai Chi Chuan, Yang Chen Fu's requirements are pretty, um, again, they're pretty challenging. So 
it does force you to have to think about everything that you're doing. If you're a dancer, for example, a lot of the movements will eventually sort of fall into place because you're in a constant state of dynamic motion. Um, your footwork does have to be precise, but there is a little bit of latitude and give through all of that footwork. But in Tai Chi Chuan, because it has a martial arts component to it, every stance you take has purpose and intention. So you can't just uh, take an arbitrary stance and think that's going to be adequate for your purposes. Therefore, you have to be focused in your mind. And yet at the same time, in addition to that awareness, you're also sort of zoning out as you hold what we call a Zen point off in the distance. Therefore, you have sort of this paradox where part of you is being highly attuned with how you're moving through your gestures, especially during the transitions, which is the hardest part of moving through the gestures. The gestures themselves are easy, but it's the transition that's hard. So here you are, you're going through these gestures, and you're trying to be mindful of all of those ten requirements, and yet the, at the same time your mind is sort of trying to drift off, and that's why they call it moving meditation. Basically what you're trying to do is achieve the same experience you have when you drive your car, you pull into the driveway, and all of a sudden you realize you don't remember how you got there. Your subconscious mind knew all of the details because you've driven the car over and over and over, but the conscious mind could go off and wander, and in a sense, it relaxes because of that. So that's sort of the secret behind this, in the fact that you've got all of these principles that are pretty um, stress-inducing because of the demand of those requirements, and yet somehow or other, you're trying to figure out, how do I stay stress-free in the midst of that? I see that as really deep wisdom. It's one thing to just close your eyes and meditate for half an hour, per se, but once you open your eyes, you're back in your flesh, and you're off to the bank and doing all of the details of the day. But if I can have that same state of being with my eyes open, with all of these distractions around me, that's sort of the wisdom behind doing this uh, Tai Chi Chuan moving meditation. You're really looking to change your programming, meaning that we have a very stressful society. Well, the world in, in general has become very st stressful, but you're trying to stay unstressed, and you have to practice that. So I kind of got off uh, track there for a moment, so pulling it back to if you're a new person planning on attending my classes, I just wanted to put it into your mind that you're going to just start and jump in right away, uh, like throwing a baby into a pond and they figure out how to swim. I know the Russians were doing that, kind of scares me, but somehow or other it works. It's kind of that way with this uh, approach as well. So, just keep in mind that when you're doing the form in the class, even though other people have been doing it a lot longer than you have, your job is to basically just follow along and fake it. Once we get through doing those particular forms as part of our warm-ups, then I always teach something in the class. That's where you start your journey. That's where you start paying attention to the details. And because each class has a corresponding video, you can begin your study by watching those just as a refresher between the classes. Also keep in mind that this is such an intense internal martial art. Your two biggest challenges is patience and frustration. Um, even those people who have been doing it for a long time, they're still refining their form. They are not looking at you. The only person that might be watching you, well not might be, uh, will be watching you is me, your teacher. And that's my responsibility, to help you find the proper way to get through your gestures. So don't worry about being in the front of the class or the back of the class or whatever. It really doesn't matter. You're going to see very quickly as you practice the form in the class that you're not even aware of all of the people that are around you. So if you can't notice them or are aware of them, why would you ever think that they're watching you? So please put that out of your mind. Again, this is very, very difficult stuff uh, because of the nature of our culture and just our human nature of wanting to look like we know what we're doing and all that. You have to set your ego aside, you have to throw out all of your expectations. Just come, do the work, and realize that you're in a place where all of us have come from. You're no different, and that's fine. So you fake it until you make it, and then as you start to look at the details, that's where you begin your journey. You open the door, and you start there. Think of it like coming to a movie ten minutes late. You can kind of figure out the rest of the movie, but at some point in time, you'll probably sneak into one of the other theaters and catch that first 10 minutes so that you can feel some closure or something like that. It's going to be the same way here. 
you're always going to benefit. Every class you come to, you're going to get something out of it. So don't worry about whether you're perfecting anything, because that's what we're trying to do over the lifetime of our existence. So the last thing I want to talk about, again, is specific to my students and not to the rest of you in, in the world. I just want to talk a little bit about martial arts protocol. When you come to the class late, that's fine, but here's the idea. When you uh, do that, you need to be patient and wait for the teacher to invite you to come in and join the class. Otherwise, it's a disruption. Uh, the other thing is, is that I want to talk about uh, bowing in and out of the space that you're in. You may see other students doing this, and here's why. When you walk inside the space where you're going to practice your Tai Chi Chuan, you really want to prepare yourself mentally, meaning that as the door closes behind you, drop everything that's in your mind outside that door or the other side of the threshold or whatever. It's basically just to switch your mindset to the work that you're about to do. The problems and the cares of the world, they're going to be there waiting for you when you get back. So here's an opportunity for you know, two hours, 90 minutes, two hours, whatever it is, to uh, get some mental relief from all those things and just focus your attention on your studies. When you leave, you also want to take a moment and bow. Uh, again, this is not meant to be a religious gesture by any means. When you bow coming into the place, you're, sitting, you're resetting your mind and you're just kind of giving a little bit of regard and respect for the space that you have, sort of uh, a moment of gratitude. When you leave, same thing, moment of gratitude, but in that particular moment, what you want to do is focus your attention on one particular thing that you liked in the class or something that you understood or if it's something that you thought was challenging, maybe you didn't understand it, but you want to figure it out, then use that to make a mental commitment to do something for the next week before you come back to the next class. Because there's videos available for you on the internet here in YouTube, there's really no reason that you can't do some stuff during the week. Because if you wait a whole seven days before you come back and do your Tai Chi again, you're just going to be struggling all the time. You'll never make any forward progress at all. So if you commit to just one thing for the next seven days, study it, then you'll be surprised. At the end of a year, if you're only going one day a week, you'll have 52 things that are embedded in your mindset and your Tai Chi Chuan experience. So again, when you come into uh, a room, you're going to take a moment and bow. If you're late for the class, Come into the room, prepare yourself, take off your shoes and change into your Tai Chi outfit if you need to do that or whatever you need to do. Turn off your cell phone, just get yourself all set for the class and then wait by the door or position yourself so that the teacher can see you and just stand there in a nice relaxed posture and just wait for the invitation. Again, you may end up having to stay there for 5-10 minutes, that's not a bad thing either. You could practice standing in Muji and just relax your shoulders and do some deep breathing while you're waiting to get that invitation. So basically, that's good manners and good uh, martial arts protocol. Bow when you come in and bow when you leave. Remember to take one thing with you. So hopefully I've helped you get some uh, preparation as to what to expect when you come to class. And I'm glad that you're uh, considering it. Last thing I'll say is if you're new, and you're looking at this video for the first time because you've had one class, I would ask that you stay for at least a month and maybe two to make sure that you've given yourself every opportunity to make a fair assessment. Um, a lot of people who come to Tai Chi having a preconceived notion of what it is because of things they've seen of, of it in the movies and whatnot. I'm teaching based on Yang Chen Fu's principles, so you won't find this in too many places. A lot of the schools just like to put on nice music and move, you know, quietly and softly or smoothly, but we have a lot more that's going to be required of us. Again, I figure if Yang Chen Fu took the time to write it down, it's probably very important. So when you uh, enter into this realm, you want to be able to have the mindset that says, I'm here to do the work. And if you only do one class, you're not going to know or you're not going to see any changes. Tai Chi Chuan takes time. It's like nature. Nature never rushes, yet everything is accomplished. So you can't really make a, 
an informed decision if you only try one class and say, oh, that's not for me. You need to give it at least a month, maybe two months, and then at the end of that, make the decision and go like, well, there's other things I'd rather do, or maybe there's other things that will benefit me more than this. But to give it a fair chance and a fair judgment and a realistic one, please make a commitment to attend at least a month's worth and actually two would even be better. So hopefully that's given you everything that you need to know about making the decision to continue on to train with me. And I hope that you do decide to stick it out because I'll tell you, it's really well worth it. That being said, jump into the water, swim on the fly, figure it out, but more importantly, open the door and enjoy your journey.